Hey, well, welcome to the Dream Labs with Dr. Contrast Live. Well, it's just really going to be a lot of fun today, folks. And um, those of you who are tuning in, uh, and Doug, if you're still there, Doug, I really appreciate you uh, tuning in. It's been a long time since we chatted, so thank you so much, Doug, for taking the time to be with me today. Let me roll back the tape a little bit here, and uh, we'll discuss where we were last, uh, last Thursday. Last Thursday, we did a series of little sketches on um, using the geometry of uh, certain solids or, or spatial relationships to develop um, vehicle design and uh, design and dynamic sketches and I think it was an interesting set of circumstances in that whole um, stream last Thursday what came up with was interesting how um, one of the conversations that came up from one of our uh, uh, Ben uh, Northern interesting statement at the end is how do you keep the dexterity what do you do to loosen things up um, how do, what are exercises you can um, uh, employ to get that lucidness uh, and that uh, free willing or um, approach to sketch rendering skills uh, and to stay alive from drawing to drawing and I think this is a good exercise today to help. It's another aspect of that to help you go through that process of not being so rigid or be so programmed or so perfect. I think that's one of the things that really becomes um, very, very critical and difficult to work with. That we we get we get in the habit of trying to be so perfect it freezes us and it paralyzes us. And I think that's the situation where you really want to avoid. So I'm going to spend some time today going through what I refer to as doing some really interesting little, uh, really quick sketches based on uh, eliminating the perfection and really and, and revealing the, pr the process and the production of getting things down and just being very lucid and not not judgmental but just putting ideas down and going through what I refer to as uh, f um, speed forms now they can be utilized in a lot of different areas I think in the speed form um, primarily from the industry side of uh, life is looking at new uh, surface work and new uh, benchmarks a new um, new nomenclature for example or surface work in a certain brand level um, that's extremely valuable obviously but I think another thing that's extremely valuable about speed forms is it allows you to kind of put all that aside so to speak uh, and not brand it or give it a, a label but look at form and shape line thrust um, uh, dynamics acceleration deceleration all these elements that we work with in terms of drawing skills and put it all aside and just explore what line will do to develop something and then, and then convert that into a, um, a package variation or a statement made uh, for transportation or boating or or aircraft design, whatever that uh, process might be. So I think uh, today, I think the thing I want to really stress is just looking at exercises, laying down lines, and not, not trying to predict it and put it in a brand or a note, uh, but to really make a, a statement about, you know, maybe this is a new look at certain things. And maybe today's stream will, will just work on putting some uh, form down and some, some studies down, and then maybe on Thursday come back in and take some of those things and convert them into a package of some sort. So let's kind of start looking right here. Let's just kind of come back and say, all right, what do we just kind of come back in here notice very free come back in first come out of this <clears throat> just nice and fluid come back up on top and then arrest it come back and bring it back in arrest it come back through it again and just end it take it right through not much there but we don't want it to be much. Just just enough to say, okay, now let's look at this. Let's go back in and really hit this thing. A little bit of tone work. That goes in the shadow, maybe. This goes out of it. And I just kind of bend that down. Just a nice, simple, maybe this little fuller in the base here. Not a little bit of line weight change. Come underneath it and then kick it up. Now let's bring this back into play again. Notice we're just not trying to force certain things. We're just looking at how this whole thing begins to arrive at developing a surface or a, a band or a form and letting it flow right off the page and there it is just a nice easy form such as that you take that same approach you come back in again maybe the speed line is a little quicker maybe this goes in a little deeper this drops just a touch that comes back and, and maybe reverses itself now it comes back into play now we add another compound off of this just draw through it drop this in Pick that up and then split it. And look at the difference in the gesture there. Now come back and pick this up. A little bit of tone in through here. Line change, thrust change under the belly, into this, and into that. A little bit of mistake back there, that's great. Don't let that work. 
Come back in a bit of tone underneath this thing. Now notice those forms, as simple as they are, begin to convey a certain gesture or a character or a personality about what you want to accomplish in terms of not predicting certain things or not trying to be perfect. Just laying down shape and surface and form and coming back in. And then notice line weight can play an awful lot part of it too. It's just really huge. Going back to what Ben Northern was saying last week about line weight can tell you where you are in space, how to direct certain things, and what to learn from in terms of uh, what to apply when you put these sketches back together again. So let's go back in again. Let's go back into here. Just a nice little big circle. Let's play off that circle. Right through it, nice and simple. Come back in again. Double scissor it, come back to it. Notice now, I'm just trying to predict where we're going with this guy. Now come back in again. <clears throat> come back up to it. We'll wait into here. A little bit of a surface change in through here. Now notice, look how, look how fluid that is. But at the same time, I'm not trying to predict on any particular brand or put a wheelbase down or a plant of some sort. Just come back in through here and really concentrate on getting those shapes. And just kind of focus in on, <clears throat> boy, pardon me, putting together a form so that it doesn't become a part of the process or disturbing. Pardon me as I reach across here. There we go. Got that up there. You go. And just, just again, looking at what happens with certain... Notice there's a certain pattern being established here in terms of rhythm and change and uh, you know weight and thrust. All those things are really becoming very, very critical to work with, yes. Uh, but at the same time, um, I'm doing all I can to not focus in on, oh, I'm going to develop a, um, a, an X or a brand or a, or a certain package. I'm looking at how can I relate this thing. Now, when I do this, what happens when I turn it upside down? All of a sudden, look at how, how unique that is. How cool is that? When you go upside down in certain things like this, it's almost like a forced, um, a very plotted, empathic sketch. All of a sudden, look how the circumstances change from top to bottom. A really interesting set of circumstances and dynamics. <clears throat> Boy, pardon me, I'm losing my goal here. Um, but again, notice how the, what we're getting at here. Uh, let's go back to last Thursday's uh, stream. Last Thursday was much more predictable of putting together the idea of getting a sketch down, laying geometry down, and beginning to develop the drawing out of that. Um, and I think a lot of good comment came out of that from last Thursday, and I just went to school, so to speak and listen to some of the conversation and some of the feedback on the chat system about how to loosen things up. Uh, how do you get dexterity? What do you look at? Uh, what do you focus in on? Pardon me just a moment. And I happen to think after that the review of uh, going around this uh, thing uh, last Thursday that maybe it'd be a good time to go back in on uh, coming next week, which would be today, Tuesday's show uh, project, and come back in and show us what speed forms do and how, to, how that becomes part of the lucidity process as well. Notice you're not predicting anything, you're not performing, you're looking at process. And I think that's the big difference. When you look at the process of certain things, that process will leave it in the product. Whereas oftentimes we put the product first and try to get perfect with it, and all of a sudden that just does not seem to click sometimes. So that can become an extremely dangerous set of circumstances to work within. So let's go back to that. Let's, let's go back here again. Let's go back and just uh, that same process. Let's start with that, that simple that simple circle. There it is right there. Now let's, let's not split it. Let's come back to the real hard stress line right through it. Now let's come back in again. Break it. Take it back. Get a little slicker with it. Now notice the intersections now. We're building up the intersections. Let's take this thing. Kick it back. And at the same time, let that go just as that. That's all I need. The more line weight in through here, thick to thin to return. It's kind of a little sharper in there. That's just going to just break that out. And let that go. Maybe there's one more line, just one more razor in there, just enough to kind of give it some snap. I mean, look at the difference in that. And it's not a matter of, again, uh, gee, I need to put a wheel down. This has to be the door opening. This is a daylight opening, you know, whatever we're looking for. This is just exploring what these forms will do. And once again, once you go through these guys, turn them upside down. Now look at the difference in the dynamics. We can begin to look all kinds of things. This is beautiful. 
Uh, not these sketches aren't beautiful, but the idea of being able to perceive into them and extract out of them certain ideas that we're going to deal with as far as, again, eventually putting them into some, maybe a brand identity of some product line. But you know, look how fluid that becomes, and I think that's what I want to get across today, that the whole concept of getting into a speed form rationale is to get away from the conventional and to just let, just let your mind explore certain things. Don't try to put it into context. Don't try to put it into a label. Do not try to box it. Just get in there and explore what 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 might happen with a, with a word, organic shapes. And then we'll move into some things a little bit later on the stream here today to kind of give you open up the door a little bit. Um, but again, you know, some of these things might not even begin to apply. But that's not the point. The point is you're looking at what could possibly take place as a result of modifying certain things. Notice you start maybe you go through a series of of what I refer to as variations on a theme. Maybe you have a theme like this. Then all of a sudden you stretch it, then you expand it, then you begin to compress it, then you begin to change of the line weights or get the scissor the overlap. Maybe this is longer, shorter. Change in the variation makes a huge difference in terms of developing those skills. So uh, let me stop right there. Doug, if you're, if you're still there, Doug, what do you think so far? Is this, is this helping, making sense? Am I conversing okay with everything here? I'll just wait for a second and get a response if you're still there. Which is great to have you on board. Very, very nice to hear from you again, Doug. Great. Excellent, excellent. Anybody? What do you think, Doug? Are you going through that while I'm waiting for a response? We just kind of switch gears and let me sign this thing here. And we'll move on to another page. How's that? Sign it, guy. We got it. There we are. There's one. There it is. Oh, hey, very good, Doug. Thank you. I mean, I mean, but is it is it making sense, or do we get into point across about sometimes it's just great to be reckless and not get in there and try to be predictable about you know this has got to look a certain way or else I failed. That's horrible. What you want to do is fail, and I say that sincerely. Sometimes the failure factor reduces the fear and also ignites the inspiration. It, it just it, it it just to be fearful about something is really that means in a sense that you don't respect it. And I think every time I go through a drawing exercise, I fully respect the fact that it's fearful from the point of view of being respectful. And I think that's the big difference here. Let me just kind of get rid of this, get rid of this clip here. We'll change, change the focus and start another sketch here. Yeah, describe the speed form. So great. Yeah. Chip, hey, Chip, how are you, man? Good to have you on board here, Chip. Let me get rid of the paper here. Sorry, it didn't connect itself very well here. So there's phase one. <clears throat> Pardon me. There was phase one in, in the books here. Let's go back and look at getting into another uh, set of circumstances where looking at speed forms and just beginning to look at some of the interactions here, what we could develop, getting on. Hey, Stuart, how are you? You don't fail, you learn. Yeah, that's right. That's a great point, Stuart. Thanks very much. And uh, Chip, good to have you on board. Stuart, saw your work in person this weekend, Doc. Looks to be even more amazing. Oh, thank you very much. I, and by the way, too, uh, Stuart, I really felt bad about the fact I couldn't make that that presentation with you guys. So thank you very kindly for the comment. I much, much appreciated. And again, uh, hopefully next time around we get a chance to see one another and shake hands and say hello. Let me go back in just for a moment. There's the first pass we're looking at here in terms of speed form studies. Uh, what they do. Um, next time, yeah, no problem, Stuart. Absolutely. So thank you so much. Um, and Chip, thank you again for joining us here, gang. So all three of you, hopefully we're making some sense here. And feel free to offer any commentary as I go along the way here so we don't get into a confusion state and uh, begin to say, oh, gee, you know, that doesn't make sense. I just I want this to really get the, the point I want to get across here today in this whole stream, as opposed to last Thursday, where it was much more technical and much more organic in terms of, uh, of uh, working with surfaces and developing a shape or a package like a two-place coupe. This is more of an exploratory side of life where you begin to move away from that perfection and get into the process side of seeing certain, certain things come together. So this is the first pass at just doing what I refer to as speed forms. Looking at how line, form, surface, uh, volume, all these things begin to play into the idea of putting it all together. So there's phase one. Let's go back and do another series here and just carry on with this whole concept of looking at, at, at the process of creating something new or something that's a little more exciting. Let's go back in and look at this. <clears throat> Let's just go back in and pick, it, pick this guy up. Let's do this. Get a nice center line through it. Start again. Come off of that center line and just come right back down the pike into a peak here. Come off of that peak with a nice little break line here. Again, this is just exploratory. Draw through it. Pick up that same point of reference. Draw through it. Bring it back in. Now the fun part is now connect the dots.
And again, come through it, come through it, come through it. Even though this looks predictable, I'm really focusing myself and not to make, now let's get the symmetry here. Let's come back, turn this thing upside down. There's my center line. There's my contact point there. I'm gonna come out of here and break it. Pick up that same transfer. Open it up, determine it, come out of here with that strike line. There it is there. I'm going to come back and hit that spot, and I come right back and pick that spot up and just connect the dots. And I kind of put that little round us through here. Let's come back in again. I'm just moving the whole thing. I'm not stopping. I'm just exploring weights, flying it off the page. More depth in three years. Just a recess? I don't know. It's just gonna just gonna give it a little exploratory stuff. Drawing. I mean, look at look at the drama in that thing. All of a sudden, man, it's wicked looking. Just and, and again, the sketch is terrible. But I mean, the idea, of the process is what if, what if, what if? And I think that's the, the real magic to me in terms of what are we doing here with this stuff? What happens if we take a chance? and open things up and not be so predictable. What do we do this? Let's put a little tone in this guy. Look at that. Look at the shapes you're starting to develop in there. And it, and it comes about uh, Batman. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> Chip, that's interesting. There's a Batman type. But again, uh, that, that, kind of a, that kind of variation can, can springboard into something like this, where you actually take that same approach, come down to a baseline here. That, and this will be the only predictable part we'll do, uh, that baseline. Uh, getting right down to a, a common line here. I want to come back in and just rip this up. Again, just exploring. Again, a little bit of tone, a little bit of line thrust. But really quick and lucid. It's almost like when you go through sketches like that, it's almost like feeling your way through the process in terms of, you know, the actual feel factor. You know, you actually touch the surfaces and you kind of go through and animate with it, feeling this is going positive, this is going negative. It's kind of a spooky way to point that out, but that's how I feel about, hey, Justin, how are you? Uh, that's the Batmobile. <laughs> <laughs> Someone just said the same thing too, Justin. By the way, uh, Chip Seven said the same thing. He's absolutely right. Hey, good to have you on board, Justin. How are you doing? Uh, thanks for joining us here today. And the whole exercise today, <clears throat> pardon me, like we did last Thursday. <clears throat> last Thursday's stream was all about getting the technical side of putting together proportion and using circles and volumes, uh, so to speak, to create a two-place coupe. Uh, and I think some of the feedback I got from last uh, last Thursday's uh, uh, stream was interesting because it brought up the interesting comment about how do you, how to do some things up? How do you set proportion up? Uh, how do you become dexterous? And I think speed forms are a great way to develop that because you're not, as I said at the beginning of the stream. If, I'm sorry if you miss it, uh, uh, Justin, but just as a recap, the whole purpose of today's stream is to do the following: to get into a system where all of a sudden you start to look at not the not the perfection of developing a vehicle or a car or whatever it might be, but the actual excitement of putting together how the process works. What happens if I go thick and thin? What happens if I go lucid? What happens if I go geometric? What happens if I just let the thing go and I work with line weights as opposed to so-called a benchmark or a product or an element. Um, so it, it's interesting how it all becomes together in terms of, of, of letting yourself become part of the magic of exploring
knowing certain things and getting into the unknown. And the unknown will be absolutely terrific in terms of revealing some things that will inspire you to move on to another set of circumstances that makes the product line better. And I think that's the whole idea here, is to, get, to almost improve the breed. Let's go back in again and do another little variation here. Let's get, that, let's get this down here. Let's get this. That. Into that. That's, that's it. Let's kind of pull this back a little bit and just get really spooky with this thing. Oh, look at that. In those three lines, I've got a form. I've got a definite form that I can work with in terms of massaging. Now I'll come back in again and maybe I plant on that same thing again. I'm going to come back in here just to develop through. Let's get that down. Let's get that down. A little bit of tone, just kind of give it an offset as to what we're doing with it. I'm underneath the underbelly here. Let's get that line to come through and then break. A bit more depth in this line, thick to thin. And again, weight changes, thick. And there it is. I mean, look at that. That's that's as simple as it gets, gang, right there. Hey, afternoon, Melissa, how are you? Uh, thanks for joining me here, uh, Chief. I mean, again, to you especially and to the gang that came into Columbus over the weekend, I really felt badly about the fact I could not get through with you. Pulisic, that um, thank you so much for taking the time to stop by the office. I, mean, I hope you picked up your print on the Manticore and you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed working on it. So uh, thank you so much for joining us here today. And the whole purpose of the stream today is getting the speed forms, you know, the identity factor of going newness and getting exploratory stuff to work for us. And really having a lot of fun with the fact that it just, um, uh, hey, thanks very much, Melissa. I appreciate it. Well, it's beautiful of you to think of it um, and uh, to respect the fact that my work uh, has some impact uh, with, uh, with, with you. I really appreciate that. Um, but all that to say that I think the whole idea, last week we did this, again, it would be redundant again, but we just really did a lot of work with this technical side of putting together a two-place coupe. And um, I think it's really interesting how um, this this one, I got some great feedback from people like uh, Justin, you were part of the process, uh, Ben was, Ben Northern. Um, how do you loosen up? Uh, what, what are dexterity exercises? What kind of loosen, uh, What kind of exercises do you do to kind of loosen up? Uh, you know, the, the, the free thinking side of the line of creativity, and uh, space. Um, as, as far as I'm, speed forms is another aspect of which you can really develop a lot of dexterity because you're not concerned about being perfect. You're looking at the process of, of, of developing line, weight, shape, volume, scale. All these things come into play, but you're not being predicted by it, nor are you predicting it. So it's an interesting set of circumstances. Let me just change this a little bit. We'll switch into another sheet of paper and go through another line up here. There it is. Let's so get rid of this guy and we'll start another sheet of paper. Looking at speed forms, how to develop confidence and get much more inspired by the fact that you're not being predicted. Or it's not, uh, you're not being forced into an area of trying to be perfect in terms of putting together the right kind of sketches and the right look or the right character. It's, it's a way to say to yourself and to your client base, here's another approach to the problem solving spectrum that might be of interest to you. So uh, let's hit, take a look at this guy here. So let's go back in and, and begin to look at some of the things we're dealing here. Let's go back in and just pick up this. Let's go here, to here, and there to there. Let's change the thrust a little bit. It's a bit longer here, a bit shorter here, a little bit longer here, a bit shorter here. Let's come out of the thing with a nice big long envelope. There it is, nice big long line. Let's come back with a straight shot right through it. And just really picking up. And maybe just enough of that, to that, to that, to that, to that. Let's just kind of open that up just a bit. Let's come in this in. Our bone line right through it. I'm gonna come back and rest that just a bit. And there it is, there that comes into that. 
that gives me that. And a little bit of a secondary kicker here. Into that. A little bit of side of pencil. Surface. There's another form study right there, just a simple little gesture about putting things together in terms of what does it begin to look like in terms of moving things around in space. And again, letting line, surface, free willing imagination just kind of take over for us here and develop some of these sketches. So let me stop there for a moment here um, and uh, just kind of feel the great. What do you think, gang? Is this making sense here today about this whole idea of getting more conceptual and getting less and less concerned about being perfect? I'll just hold on from over here getting your responses back. Uh, from all of you again, Doug, Chip, um, Stuart, and the blessing, and Justin, really appreciate you taking the time to join me today. A lot of fun to have you on board, and I really appreciate the feedback, gang. So anybody, any commentary at all so far? Has this been helpful? Well, I'm waiting here. I'll just kind of go through the process with you guys and uh, just hold on for a bit. And again, I think it's really important to really um, uh, always get get always get to the place where you're comfortable with what you're seeing in terms of uh, yeah, this is manageable. Uh, notice, I'm not panicking about oh, this isn't perfect. Uh, oh, that they didn't intend that. Sometimes the mistakes we make are the miracles. I've said this before. That's where the miracles live. Uh, things like these speed form studies open up the doors in that uh, so many different areas in terms of. Uh, taking chances, and I think that to me is uh, to part of the great part of the creativity is that, that taking the chance of certain things and getting things done much more predictable and a lot more fun than, than to try to be so perfect all the time. I, mean, I, I think perfection is paralytic. It really does slow you down. Um, I'm not saying you don't um, want to be a great craftsman or a great technician. That's not what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm seeing more from the point of view of you being much more lucid, being very innovative and extremely bold and daring. I think that makes a huge difference. So please, anybody, any comments at all before we get any further here? Uh, please feel free to speak up. Um, really helpful. So while I'm looking at that, uh, let's go back and while I'm waiting for any feedback here, let me go back and let's kind of take a look at this guy and go another way with this thing. Let's go back in and say, all right, what if we, what if we did this? Again, that circle. Some of that, pardon me, just a moment and get rid of this guy out of the way here. Uh, just setting it up like so, then come back in again with another one. Again, very, very spontaneous. And come out of that with this, and out of that with this. Super. Now come back and let's go this. Let's come back and get that line to come right through. Let's get that line to come in. And sneak the other side in place. Let's get that drive line into place. Let's just pull this together and do that. And there it is, another view here. What do you think, gang? 
Bat Wing. Yeah, that's interesting. That sounds like another, another, it must be the theme of the day, huh, Chip? Just the Bat Wing series? <laughs> it's interesting. Um, again, notice, converting that shape around, and then again, another speed form, not, a, not an identifier, not a certain brand level, just, just something that we're going to look at here in terms of what does this begin to look like? And what happens in that view there? Now, elevation does one thing. Uh, we move it around a little bit. That might change its character just a touch. That's interesting. Um, have no difficulty with that whatsoever. I'm going to come back the other. Let's go the other way. Let's kind of do. Let's kind of change the scale. Let's go back here. Turn it around. Yeah, real lucid. Using construction lines, very, very helpful. Come back in, take this right down to a peak. Let's get that little brake line over to work. That secondary little lump in through here. Let's take this back a little further. I want you to notice here, if it helps, look at the power in those sketches. I mean, the sketches aren't powerful. Don't misunderstand me. But the power of just putting down, oh, I'm freewheeling, I'm just sticking thin. Is this, I'm going to accent this, or I'm going to accent that. How am I going to play this, this scenario through? What's involved in all of this? What, what do we want to look for in terms of shape and surface and volume and the like? Uh, very interesting set of circumstances where all of a sudden you let this thing go. And uh, again, the purpose is to get the process down, not the perfection. And I think the newness factor takes care of itself. Uh, that's one of the things that all of us really kind of wrestle with. I do. And when we start to draw, I mean, does this feel right? Does this look like it has the right personality? I mean, it's saying certain things, for example, about the shape of how we see our, um, our world, about uh, being a lot more perfected in terms of uh, um, seeing the newness in it, seeing the character in it, and then taking the challenge up and then beginning to convert that into a, a, a solid statement of some sort. So let's go back into here. So another sheet here again. Anybody, any comment thus far again? Please, anybody? I get this guy all straightened up. Here we are, there's another one. Go back in, we'll start a fresh sheet of paper here. Let's go back in just for a second. Go back in just straight up. Let's go back here with this. And it's going to line right through this guy. There it is. Let's go back and strike it here. Let's 
speed forms down the base. It's just a series of lines, and there it is, just kind of overlapping in here. Let's kind of pull this upper, let's, let's just pull this upper top line, let's pull it further forward. There it is, a little quicker. Let's put a little more weight into this thing, kind of distinguish it from one to the other. Thick, back to thin. There it is, it's a real powerful strike here, guys. Hey, sorry I had to take call. What are we looking at? Now we're looking at another uh, variation on the theme here, uh, Chip, in terms of speed form studies. Just looking at shape generation, ideation, much like we did uh, beforehand. The whole idea here, unlike last Thursday's presentation, it was much more technical in terms of uh, using circles and some of the geometry to develop the uh, two-place coupe series. Um, during that conversation, um, there was an interesting comment at the end of the stream, for example, about how to loosen things up, uh, what kind of tools you use to get things done here from that point of view. So I really spent some time um, over the last few days, uh, what kind of an exercise could we show you in terms of getting a little bit more unique in terms of loosening things up and generating uh, some, some new uh, fresh ideas. So speed forms made a perfect uh, remedy for that. So I hope that makes sense, uh, Chip, does that help? Uh, we're looking at just looking at exploratory shape, line weight changes, volume, surface, but not being predictable. Just kind of laying down shape and line and letting you kind of develop its own architecture here. So, and yes, the uh, fact is, um, certainly not going to belie the fact that you can use this approach to develop a new platform for vehicle design, automobile is uh, very uh, tailor made for that, uh, aircraft design, nautical design, uh, becomes a un universal story. From that point of view, no question about that at all. We're looking at shape or a specific thing. I really, uh, not not really a specific thing. It's just it's just a, a generic surfaces um, generic surfaces chip that kind of lead us into looking at certain shapes that we could develop into a certain thing. Uh, so that's what the the intent is here to kind of much more much more lucid in terms of not trying to be predictable. It, it's not a it's not a uh, it's not a product. It's not a um, a manufactured piece like a GM product or a Ford product or a Chrysler product. It's just shape in general into which we can kind of move into an area that can put it into practice of some sort. So I uh, hope that helped to clarify that. Does that make sense? Super. Help. 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 Great. Let's go back in again and just do the same kind of a variation on theme here. Let's go back in and look at this. Come back and just get a nice little series of things here. Drawing through it, just exploring the shapes. There we are. Another certain form study here. Uh, shape study. Yeah, it's all it is. Just a good old-fashioned shape study. Uh, Chip, thank you. Um, there again, another variation on theme here. Another, just another way of looking at this guy is maybe coming back in a little stronger, a little bolder accent piece. Maybe it's more of this.
There it is, another series of forms. Just, again, looking at shape, shape, shape. Uh, not so much in terms of, uh, boy, it's going to be a great Rolls Royce, it's going to be a great Bentley, or whatever it might be. No, that, that, that's, that's not the end point. The point is to get used to being very lucid, scratching down lines, and not being predictable, but uh, predictable, or trying to predict it into a package of some sort, and you know, take it from there. So let's go back into this here. Uh, let's assign this guy. Those of you who are still out there, um, in addition to Chip, uh, about uh, Justin, anybody, uh, Doug, any commentary so far? Is this helping, hindering? Um, what do you think? Putting some things together for us? Is it helping? Um, again, I'm just trying to open it up to uh, some new ways of looking at certain things and how to develop a certain vocabulary that's out of the norm. And I think that's really critical stuff, gang. It really is. Anybody? Comment. Uh, how about uh, anybody else, please? Feel free to uh, speak up or any conversation would be great to have here. Okay, if, I can, if I can address any questions or things that, uh, that need to be clarified, please let me know here. We'll take a peek at getting that done. So, uh, again, I'll just uh, hold on for a moment here and see if any commentary coming back. We've got it. Doug Red, great performing. Yeah, it is. It, it's a it's a it's a tremendous way to look at things, Doug. And I don't mean that's not these sketches, but it's a tremendous way to look at certain things. Chip and Doug, anybody else? Uh, for example, uh, Justin Belisic. That the great thing about it is that you can use this approach no matter what it might be. It could be for hand tools. It could be for product design. It could be for nautical design. It's not a universal standard for transportation design. It's a speed form study. They call them speed forms because it, it takes 30 seconds to crank it out, and it doesn't become part of the laborious, oh, I've got to get the wheels right, I've got to get the, the handle right, I've got to have the, the grip right. It's, that's not the process. The process is just getting really good ideation for a variety of certain things or disciplines within the area of industrial design. So let's go back in here, and we're just going to crank on another sheet of paper here. Go one more, and let's see what happens here. Let's see what happens. Go back in again, up on top here. There it is. There's a little section sketch here. Um, again, just a nice little quick and dirty look at certain things. Um, how to begin to put together programs and uh, let the let the idea come together. And not worry about uh, again the perfection of it all. I think that's a I sort of be redundant throughout the course of the day here. But that, that whole idea is really what you don't want to do. You don't want to get into a certain situation where it all becomes perfection because that slows things down. And it kind of takes the magic out of all that we're trying to develop here. So. Let's go back and look at something here in terms of, um, just, just do this. Let's put a couple of little straight lines down here. This, let's go into this. Let's kind of come back in there and just give myself this. I'm trying to interpret just saying that this here, that's got this. Put into some sort of context here.
notice how I'm just dancing right across the paper, not kind of tuning in on certain things, just kind of toning things as I go, give a little bit more substance to it, more context to it. And then little by little, we're just going to pick up some weights here. And more definition. And there you are, gang. What do you think? There she is. There she is. Great form for ideation. Hey, thanks, Chip. Uh, that's a couple of variations on theme here. A little bit of different one up on top. I'm just changing themes as we go here. So once again, really interesting set of circumstances when you get into this whole idea of getting into the, the non-perfection of putting down ideas. I mean, it's, it, to me, it's absolutely paramount. As I said in the very beginning of the stream, what's the most important aspect to work with here is how we do not get caught up with trying to be perfect. I think that's one of the greatest the misnomers of all. Yeah, it's a high bar. Yeah, the right, righteous. Yeah, it's just interesting how it all comes together when you let things go and you don't get concerned about trying to be perfect. I mean, it's, it's a very paralytic uh, situation. It paralyzes you. So again, going back to last Thursday's piece, um, during the technical part about doing two-play scoops, uh, perspective sketches and the like, really uh, trying to get out of the way of uh, um, um, getting more, uh, getting out of the way of becoming much more predictable. And I think that the, the more you, the, the more we, the more we teach ourselves to become unpredictable, the more confidence we get, uh, and the more inspiring it becomes. And I think a lot of this uh, today's uh, stream came out of the, uh, the. Um, input from a lot of the questions and some of the concerns last Thursday about how do you loosen things up? Uh, how do you become dexterous? What what uh, constitutes certain things you want to work with here? Um, and I think this is all part of the process of getting together. Um, of, of, again, lucidity to me is a magical place where you just don't know where you are. I mean, you're, 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 you're trying to find something. You're searching for something. And I think that's where these sketches become so critical and uh, become part of the, uh, the intrigue and the interest of getting ideas put together here. So let's just sign this guy. And I think this is, this is what we're after in terms of just looking at, let's go back to the lineage here. Um, we're going to go back and review here. What do you think, guys? Um, any commentary at all about uh, what, we've, uh, what we've gone through today? Uh, been helpful, I hope, uh, especially for those of you like Chip, um, Stuart, if you're still there, Justin, Chipster, uh, great stuff, guys. I mean, I really appreciate you guys hanging out here. It's been a big, big help. Uh, anybody, yeah, it's been nice. Yeah, good deal. Um, helpful, let's see. Let's go back and look at some of the lineage here. This is where we started. Came out of, the, out of the blocks with the idea of saying, all right, here we are. Let's go into phase one where you just start looking at shape. And, and don't take, it might be interesting too. Um, let's see what you think of this, guys. Let's take a look at some of these sketches here, these uh, speed form studies. And maybe next week we'll come back, I mean, this uh, coming Thursday, we'll take one or two of these guys and put them into some sort of a product line. As I said in the beginning, this is the first set we did, just looking at certain shapes thicks and thins, volumes and so forth. Just uh, not so much being predictable. But one of the nice things, I didn't go through the rest of the sketches like this, but I use this page as a, as a demonstration. For example, you do them in this orientation, but look what happens when you do this. When you turn them upside down, all of a sudden, everything changes. There's some really unique things going on here. Not that the sketches are great, but I'm looking at surfaces and how to work with them. Uh, it's very much of an, almost like an empathic approach. So it takes into a, it takes it into account a lot more dimension than just an elevation sketch. So we started there. Went from that process and then into this, and then the second page is getting more of a, like a little plan view overview of a certain form study or a certain speed form. Then into an elevation again, and then into another variation on that same thing. There's a lot of neat stuff that becomes out of not just not trying to be so pressured or to be perfect. So that was the second phase we did, second page at all of information. Then we went into this third phase where we actually took an elevation, for example, and we looked at it from the rear three quarter, maybe the front three quarter. Now this might be a vehicle relationship of some sort, but I just let me take a moment and show you what that elevation began to look like in terms of, and the other view here, it's just um, another approach. So there we are, that was the third thing we did. Then we came back again and went into more of a, a free form study. Um, again, a couple of variations on theme, looking at uh, these foils of some sort that could be that could be nautical. I don't know. Uh, it could be a very uh, hydrofoil-like. 
Uh, it could be an aquatic of some sort. Again, it could be a ground vehicle as well. So again, I'm keeping the door wide open in terms of how to apply this stuff as we go through the process. And then the last one we did was just going into again back to a very simple elevation, um, and then changing gears into another uh, another form here uh, that could be um, uh, again a universal statement in terms of how to apply it. Then into a little three quarter study of just again looking at shapes and forms. And this is this would be considered maybe the next level up on a speed form, putting it in some sort of an application. But it gives you some idea. Uh, what we're after is and notice I put a little bit of a section study in here, a little bit of power system and, and behind the machine and, and uh, to give it a little more identity to it. So I hope this has been of some help for you here today, guys. You've been really great and I really thank you for the time spent. And uh, uh, as I begin to close things down here today, I really appreciate the fact that you've been with me. Uh, any questions at all that uh, you might have, feel free to drop me a note on my uh, uh, email address at jim at drcontrast.com. Love to hear from you about maybe what to do in, for future programming or things you'd like to see done. Uh, always open to that, uh, very, very open to that kind of situation and, um, and very helpful, uh, just interesting stuff. Um, so that would be really great to hear from you. Secondly, if you've got an interest in drawing programs or things you want to learn, uh, please visit my website at drcontrast.com. You'll see my YouTube stuff there, Instagram, Twitch, it's all there. And uh, also, there's, there's a uh, at drcontrast.com, there's a very simple nine lesson drawing program that might be of some interest to you. Please uh, feel free to look at that, and I'd love to have you join forces with me on that one. It's, it's, a, it's a very, very affordable set of circumstances for drawing uh, scenarios. But I think the main thing for me is uh, today is I really enjoyed the fact that you've been very kind to stay on board here today, uh, working with me and getting some feedback back and forth about how you feel about certain things. And again, the purpose today as a result of last Thursday's conversation was simply to come in today to look at one simple premise. And if I were to put it in one line here, what's the purpose of today's stream? It's very simply this, to learn how to become much more process related as opposed to being perfected. Uh, the perfection side comes. Um, the, the, the more you, I look at it this way too in closing. Um, you cannot be perfect, but you can lead yourself under perfecting the discipline. And that's the big difference. You perfect the discipline. You don't get perfect. You can't become perfect. And I don't mean that to be critical. It's just no such thing as perfection. And, but perfecting the discipline is so powerful because it takes these kinds of exercises, line after line after line, and drawing after drawing after drawing to get there. So I think that's a big part of the pursuit. And again, today's whole purpose, is, this is phase one. And I do think it'd be a lot of fun. What do you think? I need to come back in on Thursday and put some application to this and do some sketch rendering work around. Let's pick a couple of, uh, of these themes, these bead forms, and look into it a little bit more and say, oh, and let's put, let's put a package around this. Let's make it a vehicle of some sort or an element. Uh, that, that'd be a lot of fun, I think. That'd be a lot of fun. We'll keep them all together. So I'll keep these, in, I'll keep these uppermost uh, throughout the course of the day here and uh, go through the inventory and maybe pick a couple of them. Maybe I'll start Thursday stream with going through them again and have you guys pick the ones you'd like to see go into maybe some sort of a format. I'm more than happy to do that. So thanks, Chip. That's, uh, that's a, I'm glad you agree with that. So once again, folks, um, please uh, drop me a note at my email address at jim at drcontrast.com. I'd love to hear from you about what to do, uh, certain things you maybe were struggling with or you'd like to have me review or go through in the process. I'd love to do that. Uh, secondly, um, please visit my website at drcontrast.com where you'll find a very intriguing uh, nine-lesson drawing program that might be of some help to you. And let me just say this in closing. Um, I'm really interested in expanding my audience here. So if you know of anybody who wants to join me on Tuesdays and Thursdays on my stream time at 2 p.m., I'd love to have you uh, noise it abroad and uh, let people know that I'm available to be, uh, to be, to be viewed on Twitch uh, on, on every Tuesday and Thursday at 2 o'clock. And so great stuff, gang. So thank you so much for taking the time to be with me today. Look forward to seeing you on Thursday. And um, again, um, all the best always, and I always close with this, because I think it's the most important part of the entire program and stream, and that is simply this. Never forget to dare to be great, because you are. Thanks very much, gang. Have a good one, and we'll see you on Thursday. Thank you.